I didn't think I was gonna do it. But my curiosity got peaked. As you've seen, I've done plenty of videos on Firefly guitars. Before I get started on doing another one, let us discuss the nature of a review. A review can be a professional, expert review. Where somebody who knows their shit up and down can pick the thing apart and, you know, oh, and this is why you shouldn't do that, and this is why it was great that they did that. But then a review can also be from a purchaser, just the owner of a product, nothing more. That's me. I'm nothing more than a guitar player who knows a few things about guitars, just enough to get in trouble, but I am in no way an expert. So before the comments start coming saying, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, his head's up his ass, he's not Daryl Braun, he's not Rick Beato, you're right, I'm not. I'm just some dude in New England who decided that cheap Chinese-made guitars can be very interesting. So uh, won't you join me in this box opening and review? Here. Hmm. Aim it that way. Let's see what we get. You've seen this box before. I've thrown away many of these boxes. Let's see what's in this one. I ordered this about three weeks ago. Showed up yesterday. All righty. Can you see? I'm trying to make it so you can see. Hmm. Got an overhead light here. That help at all? Hmm. I'll put this down for a second. Here we go. JSN Designs, these, and Guitars Garden puts them out. This is a new one on me. Goldland? No idea what that is. Styrofoam cover on this one. And under that, there lurks a guitar with the usual stuff that comes with it. Inexpensive patch cord. And a truss rod adjusting Allen wrench. A little extra switch tip, I guess. Black switch tip Allen wrench cord. And this is what I bought. This is Firefly version of what you might call an SG, but it is not exactly an SG. The shape isn't a true SG, but uh, I wanted to see what these sounded like because I've bought my fair share of uh, hollow body guitars from Firefly, and I wanted to see what their solid guitars sound like. And this will probably and most likely be the last Firefly guitar I buy until they come out with something else interesting. Um, they're, not as, uh, they're not as cheap as they used to be. I'm not going to talk price. You can look online and see how much they are. They're still pretty inexpensive. Pretty inexpensive. But um, they're not coming out at these ridiculous, you know, like bus fare chain. So there we go. Look at that. Oh, look at that. That headstock is different, huh? Let me show you. The headstock. That sort of uh, 
two triangles and two diamonds design there. What are they calling that? A classic. A Firefly classic is what the headstock says. They did away with the JSN. Remember the JSN logo with the little flame? I liked that. I thought that was cool. All right, let's see what she looks like. The color on this one is called Lizard Burst, if you're interested. The packaging looked pretty okay. Uh, they went with all styrofoam now instead of, uh, instead of double boxing with cardboard. Get that sleeve off there. Oh, I see. They took the they took the uh, switch tip off on purpose. So look at this. You see the inside of that? That's a lot of styrofoam. That is. That's a big, thick piece of styrofoam, and does not seem like it would likely break. So there you go. That is a lizard burst sort of SG. See how it's a little bit offset. See if I can get any closer for you. Get that light on there. I kind of like that green bursting into yellow like that. A lizard burst. I got to tell you, this weighs a little bit more than my SG. Why is that thing so out of focus all of a sudden? Ah. Hmm. Look at me with the bright light. Bright light, bright light. So, um, let's take a look at it. It shipped pretty good. I don't see any damage. I'm not going to take the time I took on the last video with the spalted maple thing because that really took a long time. I won't put you through all that. Let's just go through it in the basic layman way. Like I said, I'm not going to pretend to be, oh, there's a flaw, I'm not going to pretend to be a, a, a pro here, but look at this, look, look, look. And the aluminum insert is missing off one of those knobs. Boo-boo number one. I'm going to check inside the packaging and see if it's in there, but uh, I didn't see anything fall out. I'll look again. Um, pick guard has the cover on it. I'm going to shut my phone off there. Sorry about that. Uh, yep, two humbuckers, PAF style. Um, the frets on this thing are really big. Look at the frets. Those are big frets. They're tall. Anyway. The fret ends... There's one, one right there. Well, the 17th fret has one, one sharp end. The rest are perfect. I don't feel any others. Let's check for the, uh, let's check for the fretboard being wider than the neck wood, which I did find on a guitar recently. It wasn't a Firefly guitar though. That's all good. That's nice and flush. Solid green in the back. With the wood grain coming through. Very minor flame on the neck. Kind of nice. Oh, there it is in the back. Designed and backed by JSN. And this, they put the serial numbers right out on them now in, in gold. That I don't remember. So what I'm going to do is quickly check the setup. That action is not bad. Right out of the box, not bad. But as you can see, I haven't strummed it or tuned it or anything yet. So I think I'm going to do that. Sound out of tune to you? A little. Now, first fret, usually if it's going to buzz anywhere, it'll buzz there, but it's not. 
So that seems to be okay initially. I'm going to take a, an eye shot down the neck here. It has probably slightly too much relief in it. Just slightly too much. Not bad. Some people would actually set it that way. Um, I like it a little bit straighter than that. Plus, that'll drop the action a bit when I tighten it up. The truss rod lives inside here in the headstock. Not down here. And uh, it's funny. The pick guard comes in two pieces. There's a pick guard. And then there's a piece of pick guard covering where I'm guessing a truss rod would go. Either that or they just wanted to take up the space between the pickup and the neck, but I'm curious to know what's underneath there. So I do not know. Um, I gotta look for this piece, this missing piece right here, and see if it's anywhere around, uh, and see if I can put it back on with a little super glue, otherwise they're gonna owe me a knob. Um, and I'll probably do a little bit of setup on this, and then after I've set it up, I'll come back and plug it in, and just give you a brief rundown of what it sounds like. So uh, let me let me do the standard tasks and try and find that piece of aluminum, and I will get back with you guys. I'm going to shut this camera off for now, back in a flash. Well, I'm back, and I must say, after some closer scrutiny of this guitar, um, I'm a little disappointed. I really am. Um, I did find the little aluminum uh, disc that went on the volume knob there, and it was just stuck in the... Uh, stuck in the foam sleeve and I found it sitting there and it's basically only held in place just by snapping it in there's no adhesive under the, underneath these very very cheap knobs you can feel them very cheap plastic very cheap pots as well they they don't have very fluid motion when you turn them the, the knob is not hitting the wood nope there's clearance underneath the knob so it's not a matter of the knob rubbing on the finish it's not it's a uh, the way the pot moves and I mean granted they're brand new and never been broken in but um, they're hard they're hard to turn the the bridge position volume knob is the only one that's reasonably easy to turn the rest of them are, are difficult but uh, minor problems um, first of all you won't believe what was underneath that little piece of black pick guard material at the base of the neck I won't believe it. You can't. You can't believe it. Nothing. Because you can't believe in nothing. So I can't believe that. Um, just a couple of screw holes, which were poorly drilled to begin with, and frankly fucked up the finish right there. Up here at the top of the neck, uh, at the head, actually. Um, Underneath the uh, the truss rod cover, there is a there's a a paint blemish right there. I don't know if you can. It's not in the in the cam right here. Um, if I can show it to you, I don't know if it'll show up. See it? Oops. Try to see that. It's some sort of a rough spot in the paint. I don't know what caused that, but. Um, most of it will be covered by the pick uh, by the uh, truss rod cover, not all of it. Um, I did turn the truss rod a little bit to take out some of the relief that was in there and, and give it a little more tension. There's so much gunk inside that truss rod aperture right there. It's 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 like they swept all the leftover compound in there on purpose for some reason. The uh, when they drilled the holes for the screws all over this guitar, they they didn't uh, they didn't do anything to keep from cracking the finish. So wherever the screws are going into this guitar, don't mess with them if you get one because you'll probably lift that finish off. So we're going to be very gentle there. Um, the Firefly logo at the top here has a blemish in it. it has a uh, Well, you can't. It's hard to see in the camera. In fact, it's almost impossible to see. But there is a uh, there's a real little dimple from the angle I'm looking at it at, right over the letter R. Uh, no one's really going to probably notice it except the person looking for it. There's that, and um, 
and as you can see the the, the firefly brand logo there it looks like it might even be off a little bit i don't know but um the tuners they turn fine and they uh, they seem to hold tune pretty well they are easy to turn i didn't have any problem with the tuners um straightening the neck out was easy the truss rod turned with uh you know relative ease the nut seems to be bone pretty sure that's a bone nut and the nut height the the the, uh, the string slot height is a little too high all the way down just a little too high i can fix that easily enough but the real problem with this guitar is that the uh the frets the frets are like waves on the ocean on this thing there's high ones there's low ones this is going to need to be uh fret leveled in the worst possible way it, it's like i don't understand it they took the time they took the time to polish the fret ends so that they wouldn't be sharp but they didn't take the time to mount the frets correctly they're you know they just look like they were hastily installed there's little areas on the neck where you can see that where the binding is where they didn't take much care to protect that binding from whatever they were doing it's got gouges in it um this guitar um even though it is inexpensive i haven't even plugged it in yet and if i had seen it before buying it even at that price i wouldn't have bought it okay now i i've seen a few really great reviews on this guitar but those are mostly reviews just from people about, you know, what's the overall design quality? How does it play? How does it sound? That kind of thing. I haven't even plugged this thing in yet. But um, I could live with some things. But having to fret level a brand new guitar, that's kind of taboo. Because you're going to lose meat on those big frets that they gave you. Thank God they're big. But you're going to lose mass in those frets already. Because some of them are so high, I mean, you know, no matter where you put the neck. You hear that? No matter where I set this action on this bridge, and no matter how I set the truss rod, and it wouldn't matter what I do with the, uh, the nut slots, because, you know, it's on the other side. And, uh... Yeah, there are some frets on several strings, I noticed. I won't... I won't go through all of them and show you but there are several strings where the there's a, either a really high fret in front of it or just one sadly low fret and uh and that's that's terrible when there's a low fret because that means fret leveling the whole thing um so this is going to have a lot of work to put into it just to get it to be playable otherwise it's going to buzz all over the place and you know i haven't even finished setting it up i, I was just going to start looking at the intonation but uh, I'm not going to bother yet because the frets aren't level. So that's uh, my initial on this guitar out of the box without plugging it in is, you know, maybe not quite passing grade. I mean, you know, for me, I, I intended to play this, you know, live. Maybe use it as a backup to my, Ib my Ibanez uh, AXS32, which is kind of like this. I don't usually use a less, uh, I'm sorry, an SG live. I've got one, but I, I tend not to use it. In fact, I'm selling mine. But uh, I wanted to have something of comparable weight and comparable configuration to my AXS32 in case something happens to it, just to have on stage with me. This was going to probably be it, but now I'm doubting. Uh, I'm going to pause this one more time because I'm going to plug it in and see what it does plugged in, even though I know it's going to buzz. So I'll be back. While uh, fumbling around looking for a, a strap to put on it and... Turning my amp on, I uh, I picked it up and realized that at the base of the neck in the back here, there's, oh, a quarter size paint blemish. Looks like somebody smashed this with some kind of a tool. It said, paint over it and, and, and put a clear coat quick before somebody sees that. So that's nasty and I can feel it all the way up and I won't be able to fix it because it's underneath the paint. And uh, by the way, uh, the finish on the Firefly guitars I've bought up until now has been pretty much impeccable. This one sucks. This one just sucks. The finish is, you know, shining kind of clean on the front. Uh, but the back, um, the back has several areas of questionable shine, I guess. And, you know, 
I mean, you, you got to keep telling yourself, well, what do you want for the money? What do you want for the money? Uh, what does anyone want for their money? <laughs> you know, something that's decent. So, I mean, you know, that stuff I don't care that much about, as long as the paint isn't cracked anywhere. The places where the screws go in, I'm not going to touch any of those because that's going to probably mess up the, the paint. But the, um, you know, so I'll leave those alone. But, um, you know, that neck has to be saved. I can't do anything about the... Uh, I can't do anything about that big, you know, thunderbolt that hit it in the back there, right at the base, right near the head, right near the body. It is a set neck. Can't take that off. Can't do anything with that. Um, however, when I plugged this guitar in, it won me back a little bit because I'll tell you what, this does not sound bad. The pickups are nice and, and right there. <laughs> Got it set up kind of bright. Let me roll off the tone on the guitar a little bit. About half tone. Very linear pots as well. They're not. Uh, they're not uh, logarithmic as far as I can tell. I don't know how well my uh, my little stage right amp is coming through that mic, but. And here's the middle with everything turned all the way up. Pretty high output for these pickups. And um, the bridge one is pretty close to the strings, but not too close. And uh, the neck is at a pretty good distance from the string. And uh, these are nines, I think, that it came with. They feel like nines to me. Um, but. Uh, the frets are a little tiny bit rough, but it's not going to matter. I'm going to have to level them anyway, so they're going to be shiny when I'm done with them, that's for sure. But um, I'm trying to find some way to get this set up equitably enough so that I don't have to level those frets, but it's kind of a lost cause. If, if, you, want to, if you want to play with confidence and know that there are no buzzes, um, in this case, you're, you can't get out of that one. So, anyway... <laughs> So let me show you the bridge position pickup by itself. Clean channel. It's very barky. But, uh, let me roll some of the bark out of the amp. It's nighttime. I can't really turn this amp up. Sounds like they have the right uh, the right uh, tone cap in there because the the attack isn't too too bright. The amp is set up very brightly anyway. I tend to play with bright settings anyway, but they put in a they put in tone caps that apparently uh, res rescue me from myself. So tonally, the guitar seems pretty good. If I wanted to drop the main and turn up the gain. Let's see what that gives us. Not as hard as I expected that to be. Honestly, I've got the gain. 
I've got the uh, the the uh, the top gain all the way up and the overall volume pretty far down. I expected more cheese from it. buzzes all over that and that lot of buzzes in there so I'm not too impressed with them on the hot I like these pickups better clean So that's the basic rundown. I'm not going to make this video any longer than it already is, but this guitar needs... Uh, sometimes you can say a guitar needs something. Other times you have to say a guitar has things that you have to ignore. This guitar has several things on it that you just have to ignore. You've got to ignore that there's a big... Can you see it? I don't know if you can see it. Drives down, right down the bottom here. It's just a... I don't know if I can really make it visible because of the curve. See it? I mean, that's just a careless mistake somebody made, and they, uh, they didn't give enough of a shit to fix it. So they left that fucked up. They painted over it. And uh, even when, as far as putting on the, the, the final buff out and left that like that, which is really unacceptable. So I have to think about whether or not I want to return this guitar. Um, it was hard to find it in stock. Um, but uh, I don't know. I mean... I could call it another project because I, I like those frets if they are leveled. If I can level them, I'll have to learn to like them. And uh, the pickups are okay, but I can always swap those out. God knows I got plenty of pickups around. And there's always guitar fetish too. Their pickups are pretty good replacement pickups. You can get whatever you like there. Find something that, that's very, very agreeable to you. So I haven't even monkeyed with that bridge or anything. Um, so I'm just going to leave it right there. Uh, this guitar was somewhat of a disappointment out of the box. I'm not thrilled with it. I, I kind of like the color, you know, the basic presentation. I, I kind of like it, um, but I'm not going to rave about it. And uh, if I did keep it, I'd have to do a lot of work to it. This time I mean it, not like the last time. Um, people criticize me for saying, oh, yeah, well, every guitar needs setup. That's true. But not every guitar needs a fret level right out of the box. And not every guitar has blemishes in the finish like that. And, you know, careless screw holes and things. It's just thrown together quickly. It really was. And um, I can't recommend this to anybody, really. So, there you have it. The uh, Firefly, uh, their, their version of an SG, what do they call it? The, uh, was it an FFLG? Something like that. I forget what the, what the model designation is. But that... Uh, that guitar, I mean, the weight of it is decent. The neck is a little thicker than an SG neck that you're used to if you play an SG. Um, but it is, it, it doesn't feel bad, except for that one problem that it has, at, you know, in the paint. The neck itself feels pretty good. The tuners are good. The binding is decent, but they hit it a lot when they put those frets in. They just hit it. They didn't care about cleaning it up either. They just left it hit. Um... They rolled off the ends and they made that a priority. If I had to choose between a rolled off fret end and a, uh, a, a you know, a, a sh you know, a shitty looking, you know, if I had to pick between whether I wanted the fret ends rolled off really well or if I wanted the binding to look pristine, I'd go with the rolled off fret end. So I can forgive that, you know. Um, the, uh, the truss rod worked well. Um, it took to the adjustment that I made right away. And when I overcompensated and backed it off a bit, it took to that as, too, as well right away. And that's important to know. Um, so it has its good points. It has its bad points. If you just wanted to take that body and make something else out of it with, uh, you know, uh, upgraded parts, you could do that, you know. But then, uh, you know, again, you'd end up spending a few hundred dollars anyway, which you could have just used to buy yourself a little, you know, used fender or something. Or, an, or, or another uh, a Gibson. You actually go get an SG or even like an Epiphone, a halfway decent Epiphone SG. 
So I figured I'd uh, offer a few final words on that guitar. Since I first took it out of the box and demonstrated it for you, um, I've done a few things to it. I had to monkey with the action. Um, I had to, uh, I had to either either go with a back bow in the neck and raise the bridge quite a bit or go with a real straight neck drop the bridge a little bit and then I had to you know finagle with it back and forth until I found a place where the fret buzzing was minimized because I really decided that I don't think I want to do a fret level on that guitar it, it's a lot of work and it does take a lot of the material out of the frets which I was really hoping not to do and the guitar you know the frets themselves are nice they're 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 a good heavy steel fret wire as far as I can tell it looks very like steel to me um, if they have a nickel component you know it's it's possible because they are pretty shiny but um, they appear they appear to be steel and they seem to have the feel of steel again I'm not looking at any spec sheet of the guitar I didn't want to drill down too deep into that stuff um, and tonally when I played with the guitar a little bit more in the amp um, clean and dirty I realized that um, it it, it uh, responds more like a Les Paul than it does an SG, uh, probably because of the weight and the thicker neck. And because it's doing that, because the uh, because the mass of the guitar is is conducive to that sort of uh, that sort of Les Paul, you know, uh, you know, a Les Paul, nothing really sounds like a Les Paul, but a Les Paul. Um, but you can tell when you're playing one; it has that feel. And that guitar sort of has a feel like that. So I think what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to pull those Firefly pickups out. And I may just, like I said, I might just go to GFS, you know, Guitar Fetish, and find some, uh, you know, some high output uh, PAF style. Um, or at least just some kind of humbucking. I might even uh, consider putting P90s in it. I had some success with, uh, with um, GFS P90s in another guitar that I have. And... Um, I'm actually in love with that guitar. That's in one of my rehearsal rooms um, for my Friday night oldies band that I do. And um, this, I might, uh, I might consider putting the same kind of pickup in it. So um, I'm going to keep the guitar. I'm not going to go through the hassle of returning it, um, but I will caution the pros prospective buyer. I think because Firefly guitars go in and out of stock so often, and the demand for them has been so uh you know astounding pretty much i mean they, they want to stock all the time i think now they're sort of rushing them through the factory to keep up with the demand and um, i realized upon inspection of that guitar again really closely um, without feeling the pressure of a camera on me that that guitar uh the 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 blemishes that i'm seeing in the paint and the finish are actually burn throughs from some sort of a buffer or even a sander but they still painted over it so uh, it's like, you know, good enough, get it out of here kind of thing. So uh, think twice before you buy one. And if you do, be prepared to do a little extra other than set up work. And don't be surprised if you see something that doesn't exactly thrill you about the guitar. Like I said, something you'll just have to get used to. Um, I would have to get used to a few things on that guitar, but I'm going to give it a try. So again, I'm not recommending it. If you want to try it, you know, uh, do it of your own volition. My review of that guitar is that it's, you know, it's kind of okay, but I expected better. I really did, even at that price point. So uh, that's all I've got to say about it. And uh, again, thank you for visiting my channel. And, uh, you know, give it a like, give it a sub if you haven't already. And uh, I will try to be back soon with something interesting for you. In the meantime, take care of yourself. It's been a beautiful autumn so far here in New England. I hope you can enjoy the fall where you are. And I'm looking forward to the trees changing because that's beautiful. It's my favorite time of the year, this and spring. So enjoy it, and uh, I will talk to you soon. This is your, your friend Larry from the Pipecat channel saying goodnight.